cameras captured this man very nonchalantly walking through the hotels. He didn't have a care in the world. He appeared to be uh, either texting or uh, emailing someone as he walked through the lobby. And I think if we went to the lobby of the Marriott or the Western right now, we'd probably see a thousand other individuals doing just that. No one called to identify the man in the pictures. But there was another lead police hoped would take them further. Julissa had set up her appointments through a friend who quickly called to offer help. Julissa Brisman's friend provided us with the email that the our suspect you know, sent to her. It seemed the killer had set up a new email address just to make the appointment. He thought that would protect him, but he was hopelessly naive about the internet. Every time somebody hooks up their computer to the internet, they get a certain thing called an IP address. It stands for Internet Protocol. And that internet protocol address is really like a phone number or fingerprint. You could use this email address to find a location from where the emails were sent. So that was a huge um, clue for them. It was turning into an unusual case for Boston authorities. Being in an urban environment, in, in an inner city, uh, the majority of our homicides are not of this type. It's, it was completely different for us. They had to subpoena the records of the internet provider Comcast to find out where the emails had been sent from. But the information would take days to come through, and it wouldn't come in time. Up next, the Craigslist killer continues his spree. There was a state of disbelief. How can this be happening again? The same week that Julissa Brisman was murdered, another woman in New England posted an ad on Craigslist offering erotic services, a stripper who sold private lap dances in her hotel room. She was working from a Holiday Inn Express in Warwick, Rhode Island, 50 miles from Boston where women worried about the Craigslist killer. On the evening of April 16th, the stripper received a phone call from a young man seeking her services. Despite the glaring headlines about the ongoing manhunt for the Craigslist killer, the woman took the risk and arranged to meet the client at her hotel room a few hours later. It was a big mistake. The client, who had been playing poker at Foxwoods Casino, drove to Warwick. He stopped at a Walmart there, and police later found out he used one of Tricia Leffler's credit cards.